Welcome back to Midday. We're down at the Camel's Art Gallery this afternoon and there are two different exhibitions going on here at the same time. Some fantastic things actually going on. We are joined by the curator, Chero Neville, and uh, it's lovely to see you again. You too. Yes, lots of great things going on down here right now. Two exhibitions taking place. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about each of them. Yes. So we have Sonia Cornwall Roundup and Western and obviously by their titles you can tell that they're based on a, a kind of Western theme. The exhibitions for the year are all based on this idea of place. So uh, these first exhibitions for our year ahead really look at the idea of the West. So tell me a little bit about the Sonia Cornwall exhibition. Uh, she grew up on a ranch in the Caribou Chilcotin, and so she had an exposure to ranching as well as she loved to paint, so she put them together. Exactly. Her mother, Vivian uh, Cohen, was actually a painter as well, and she went to the Banff School of uh, the Arts, and she met A.Y. Jackson, and then he actually came to the ranch and then invited other artists, and so this was the kind of life that Sonia grew up with really working on the ranch, uh, but also reading about art and painting herself and meeting other artists. So she has passed away in 2005, but you were given these pieces of art from her estate to be able to show for a little while, is that right? That's right, we borrowed them from the estate and also the Penticton Art Gallery. And this exhibition is guest curated by Roger Boulet, who's an art historian who works with us sometimes. And uh, it's, a, it's a good selection of the kind of work that she produced starting 1965 to 2002, so it's a real range. Yeah. We also are seeing here today uh, an exhibit of tumbleweeds. It's actually quite fascinating to walk through this. It's this huge area filled with tumbleweeds, and then you go through to the other side, and there's a tumbleweed sitting there watching a show about tumbleweeds. Can you explain <laughs> that? Yes, it's quite an unusual installation. Um, we had two five-ton trucks deliver tumbleweed to the gallery for the installation and uh, it's actually a project by uh, an artist collective called Drill and that's the first letter in each of their names and they work collaboratively and this is the third installation of this project and it's essentially, uh, as you said, a room full of tumbleweed that leads to this living room and it's all set up like a film set. It's very theatrical and within the living room space you can watch this old vintage television that's playing a film that they put together of edited clips throughout um, kind of Western Hollywood film history of the tumbleweed as it tumbles through. So it really focuses not on the cowboy or human protagonist but the tumbleweed is the main protagonist. The tumbleweed is called the Russian thistle, and mm -hmm. so that is what the tumbleweed comes from. I always thought the tumbleweed was dried up sage bushes. I don't know where I got this idea from, but it's the Russian thistle. Yeah, I learned this as well. So this was, it's a plant that was brought to North America by immigrants, and that's why Drill really wanted to use it as a symbol in a way of uh, the way that North America has been populated and this idea of the new frontier. Um, and the Russian thistle is really a voracious weed. And so its purpose in life is to grow and then break off from the roots once it's dried up, uh, which we see here. And then it just tumbles across the landscape and it scatters its seeds. So it's really symbolic in a way uh, for the way that um, colonization happened mm -hmm. and settlement happened across North America. Let's talk about the artwork that's in the other room as well that uh, sort of uh, is symbolic of the Idle No More movement that's uh, very uh, well known right now. Yeah, it's an interesting coincidence and maybe something's just in the air, but mm -hmm. uh, this is an important work that we haven't actually had the opportunity to show here at the gallery before, but it's in our permanent collection. And it was made in 1997 by Lawrence Paul Yakwalapton, and he's an artist who was born in Kamloops and grew up in Vancouver. He's based in Vancouver now, 
And so in 1997, he decided to go to the UK and he took copies of the Indian Act and he did two performances in two different sites. Um, and in the installation, we see the, the rifle shells um, and the copies of the Indian Act that have been shot up in this performance, as well as a shotgun that he used. Um, and really, he feels quite strongly about self-governance for First Nations people and that the Indian Act doesn't represent the interests of First Nations people. Mm -hmm. It's a, a document that was created in 1763 and it's what did not include the voices of the First Nations living in Canada at the time. And it still goes on today. You yeah. Know, that's uh, very symbolic. That's right. As well, uh, we have a collection of artwork here from a lady from Vancouver, I believe you said? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Dana Claxton. And she is actually of Lakota Sioux background. And so she's presented a suite of photographs. There's five of them. And one of them uh, people might recognize if they've gone on the outside of the building here and seen a big banner of uh, an Indian boy on a pony is part of the title of that work. Uh, the whole suite is called the Mustang Suite. And so it also refers to um, the adaptability, actually, of First Nations people uh, due to the introduction of the horse mm -hmm. and also using the Mustang as a symbol for value and power um, and of course how much that changed the life of First Nations people when it was introduced to North America. Fantastic. The last one uh, that's going on in the far corner is a collection of three different movies. It has to do with Western gun tricks and, and other things. Tell yep. me about that one. Yes, so that's, uh, there are three works by Louise Noguchi and she's a Japanese Canadian artist. She lives in Toronto and she has uh, had a real fascination with Wild West theme parks. Uh, so much so that she actually traveled through the United States and documented these theme parks. And she learned gun tricks herself and lassoing tricks. We see in one of the videos, she's at, we see her head kind of bobbing and she's lassoing a horse mm. in this action. And so she's also kind of slowed down and focused really closely in on some of the movements of the gunplay and it's really a way of maybe thinking about uh, the Western as entertainment, which is in contrast to someone like Sonia Cornwall, who is really just depicting her life as she saw it. Some great works going on here at this, all at the same time, which makes it really neat. It's two major exhibitions in one. Tell me this, how long are they uh, here for so people can come down and check them out? Yeah, we have about a month left. March 23rd is the last day. Fantastic, and what are your hours so people know? We are open from 10 to 5 every day, and on Thursdays it's free, and we're open until 9. Fantastic. And is there anything else you'd like to I add today? I should also say that yes. we're not open on Sunday. Yes, not on Sunday. Not there on you Sunday. go. Yeah. There's some really fantastic yeah. things going on down here at the Camels Art Gallery. We encourage you to come down and check them out. They'll be here for another month, as you said, so uh, definitely worth taking a look. We will take a two-minute break. When we come back, more Midday Ahead. Stay with us. Another wave in the ocean I am a rock Not just another grain of sand Wanna be the one You run to when you need a shoulder I ain't a soldier But I'm here to take a stand Because we can 